Hi everyone. Uh, how will we know when it's safer, when you're feeling like sandpaper? Well, we're going to talk about that today, how we can protect ourselves. Hi, I am Lois, your friend for forgiveness from walking without skin. And my guest today is a very, very special friend and a very, very special person. And I am so excited to welcome Sunette Smith, more commonly known as Smitty. Hi, Smitty. Hi, Lois. Thank you so much for joining us today. Smitty. Thank you. I, I, I like chatting to you. Thank you for, for, for uh, calling me. Thank you. Well, your message for the world, for the women of the world, is so important. So, Karate Sensei Sunette Smith is an eighth Dan black belt and is the highest graded woman in karate in Africa. Not to mention one of the highest graded women in the world. And she's been involved in the field of karate and self-defense for over 30 years. It's a long time. Lois, may I just say that it's now heading 50 years, okay? Oh, okay. That 30 years, oh, yeah, that 30, 30 years, years was printed in my book, so yes. Sure. I just catching up on us, girl. <laughs> well, I was just share with the with the viewers um, how I know Smitty. It was 25 years ago now, somewhere around there, where I was brutally attacked raped to my activism and wanting to change the world i had i came across smitty and smitty wanted me to explain to her how i was attacked which i found quite a bizarre question how was i attacked mm -hmm. but i showed her i took her to the place where it happened and i showed her how i was attacked and smitty then said would I mind coming to watch her teach her self-defense students how to prevent an attack such as the one that I had to endure? Well, that was quite traumatic because when I went to watch Sunette teaching these girls, these little girls, small little girls, they were fighting off, Smitty hired this colonel who was the attacker and these mm. little girls were fighting off this man in the same scenario that I, we, how I was attacked. And I just looked at it and I thought, if I had known just two, one or two of those moves, I could have beaten my attacker. And so that was the start of my friendship with Smitty, where I realized that we can protect ourselves but that's all i'm going to say i want smitty to share some of her knowledge about attackers and how we can approach being attacked over to you smitty thank you lois well um first of all may i just say that it, it, it the, the time has always been i can't say we have arrived at that time because it has always been since I can remember for women to be aware of their personal safety and even more so now than ever before. And personal safety, yes, I teach karate, but I really, really focus separately from the karate on self-defense empowerment workshops for women whether it's just through lectures or whether it is through lectures and training, the skills of self-defense. But I think it's very important that women um, be empowered so that they have the background like we are doing now. And, and even better, maybe some techniques that the muscle memory will remember in a time of need. But from a safety point of view, important is this. First of all, say to yourself every day when you wake up and you get going. It sounds intense, but it must be like part of eating your breakfast in the morning. 
you say to yourself that day, what do I see? Do I see the danger? Because often attacks can be avoided because you were just a little bit more aware. Now, in your particular case, Lois, which we can get back onto a bit just now because you were blitz attacked, there wasn't that. It wasn't a matter of you walking down the street and you actually visually saw somebody approaching you or somebody standing at the corner of the street or somebody walking to their car, you know, something like that. But a very good uh, personal safety tip is what do you see? And then the second thing is, what do you hear? Do you, do you hear something that is out of place? Like, for instance, a car stopping and then the doors open and somebody is jumping out. Footsteps, strange footsteps coming up behind you. Maybe the window breaking in your house. Don't say, ah, oh, it's the cat or the wind. You know, rather be aware of that particular sound that it is out of place. Dogs barking, that sounds out of place, for instance. What do you hear is very, very important. Take note of that. And then for women in particular, I firmly believe that women have, are born with intuition. What do you feel? That is so important, especially if we look at date rape. You know, when the young girls, uh, go out with the boys and they're feeling all important because it's maybe a sport captain that's taking her out, you know, or the head boy of the school or the college or whatever, somebody that's, that she fancies and he's taking note of her. But it could turn into a date rape. But if her intuition tells her, doesn't matter what he's wearing and the car is driving, if her intuition tells her, I'm not feeling very comfortable with this guy. Or you're at a party and there's somebody in the room and you feel, I'm not feeling comfortable about that guy standing over there. Trust what you feel. Very, very important. And I'm gonna, going to tell you on that, in particular, Lois. I interviewed a woman that was um, attacked in a lift in a shopping center. Uh, what happened was in broad daylight, she was standing in front of the lift. It was like three o'clock in the afternoon. At that time, there was nobody there. She was the only person standing there. And when the lift stopped, the doors opened and there was a, a man standing in the lift, wearing a suit, looking very nice, holding a briefcase. And she thought, this was a guy coming up from the top of the building where they, they were offices. So he looked like a kind of an executive guy. And all he said to her was, are you going up or are you going down? That's all. Never said anything. He just said, are you going up or are you going down? That is what we call a confidence style of attack because there's communication before the attack happened. So in other words, whatever he said, put her off guard. Are you going up or are you going down? Plus the fact that she was in a shopping center and there are lots of people there. However, she got into the lift. He pushed the ground, the, the parking bay button in the basement. You, you know what, how it is when you get into a lift. I don't know if you've ever looked at people when you get into the lift, because I do. Whenever I get into a lift, and it's, that's not just me with my self-defense. I look at everybody. I used to do a workshop for a company um, and they were, the, work, the, the class were right at the top floor of, of their building. And I used to get into the lift and then I would watch all the guys in the lift, you know, it's now like lunch hour. Yeah, and this guy's got an earring and then I imagine he's, he's attacking me. And then, and then I imagine I rip the earring from his ear. And then I look at this guy and I see, oh, okay, he's got soft shoes on. I'll stamp my foot onto his toes, break his toes, you know. That guy's wearing a baggy pants. Oh, I'll grab him between the legs, hold tight, twist and pull, you know, that type of thing. I just do self-defense in the lift. 
by the time I'm on my floor where the workshop used to take place, I was feeling so empowered. Of course, the guys in the lift, you know, me now doing all these techniques, in, in imagining, you know, these attacks, all the guys in the lift, of course, were feeling quite uncomfortable and looking rather suspiciously at me, you know, what is this woman looking at, you know, she's looking between my legs and this one, and she's looking down at my feet and that one, you know, my ear. But that's, that is good self-defense when you can practice like that in your head. So this woman, when she got into the lift, this guy just took her down to the basement. And at the, in the basement, he pulled her out of the lift, he threw her down onto the ground, dragged her obviously to the corner, threw her down onto the ground, and he proceeded to, to rape her. So when I interviewed her, I said to her, let's go back to the beginning where you were standing at the, at the doors, at the lift. And when the doors opened, I said to the woman, what did you feel when you looked at the guy? And she said to me, well, you know, he was wearing a gray suit and he was wearing brown shoes. And I said, that's fantastic that you observed that. But what I'm asking you is, what did you feel when you saw the man? And she said to me, well, I felt, I actually felt uncomfortable. I felt uncomfortable about the man. Then I said to her, why did you get into the lift then? And she said to me, well, you know, I was thinking that he is thinking that I am thinking that he is going to attack me. And I didn't want him to think that. Why not? You know, if you do feel that about somebody, your intuition is saying to you, I'm not feeling comfortable about this person. Don't get into the lift. All you have to do is just say to the person, thank you very much. I'm waiting for a friend. You go. That's all. Just say to the guy when he says, are you going up or are you going down? Just say to him, I'm fine, thanks. I'm waiting for a friend of mine. And you don't need to overdo it. Just have a nice energy that comes from your body that shows, you know, you, you're in charge of yourself. And you don't need to freak out, you know. If he says to you, you're going up or you're going down, you don't have to say, no, it's okay, thank you. I'm waiting for my friend. You don't have to like go crazy, just say, no, it's fine, thank you, I'm waiting for my friend, you go. So th that is what you do in a confidence style of attack, for instance. A person asking you for directions, that is a confidence style of attack, where the communication is taking place. Car stops and the guy says to you, um, excuse me, how do I get to so-and-so or that street or that building? Um, and you explain and off he goes. And then three minutes later, he comes again and he stops and he says to you, I got lost. Can you just explain to me quickly again? But, but now he's gained a bit of more confidence. He's, he's got you more off guard. And what happens is when you are off guard, that is when the attacker can launch. Even just asking you for the time of the day. The guy says to you, excuse me, what is the time? You take your eyes off that person, you're looking down at your watch, and in those three seconds, that's when the person can attack you. So the confidence style of attack is so common because we know so many people um, that we interact with that you'd never think will be the person who is going to attack you because last weekend you were at a, at a function and that guy was there or somebody you know from school and you we can't we can't live our lives thinking that you know every every man that passes you is is a is going to attack you or every man that you know um is going to attack you i mean that that wouldn't be sensible to live like that but we have to enhance our awareness and you have to be aware when you a person communicates with you of the other possibilities. You know, the fact that the, that, that, that that person is a director of a company or he is a policeman or he is 
in the medical profession or it's the gardener or the guy that owns the shop down the road doesn't mean that that is a person who can't attack you that just means he's good at his job that just means whatever he's doing he's doing it he's doing it okay he's doing it well but he he can be an attacker. We don't know about that person's agenda or the other part of his life. Then the other, other pattern of attack, besides the confidence pattern, is uh, the blitz attack. And that is what happened to you, Lois. You were blitz attacked because the guy came out of the blue, all of a sudden, no warning signs. It just happened. And that 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 is the one that is the difficult part for women is when a blitz attack happens because when you are part of a, a confidence pattern of attack you can still talk your way out of it you can still when the guy says to you excuse me do you have the time you know of, of my my watch is isn't working you you can say to the person oh how, how strange is that my watch is also not working and and don't take your eyes off the person or like in the lift scenario don't get into the lift you can communicate back and you can get out of that situation even before the attack happens the guy stops next to you and says to you can you please give me some directions you can say to him oh i've got no idea but there is a shop down the road go and ask them there but in a blitz attack, that is where it is uh, to your advantage if you know some self-defense techniques. And may I just say this with the self-defense techniques. Keep it simple. Never make it complicated. Don't learn anything that is too complicated. Because in a time of crisis, your adrenaline is pumping. Um, things are sometimes in the way, like chairs and tables and you know, you might be in the garden and it's very, very difficult to do complicated moves unless those moves are being practiced almost every day or at least every week. Like a lot of the karate people, they train those techniques over and over and over. But in a blitz situation, my advice is just keep it simple. Techniques like, for, for instance, uh, uh, hitting with your open hands like this onto the ears. Now, that doesn't look like a fantastic Jackie Chan te technique, but yes, it is. Let me tell you, if you hit somebody like this onto the ears, you burst the eardrums immediately and the person loses his, uh, his balance. Uh, your fingers are good weapons. Think of your whole body as a weapon. Your fingers, you take your thumbs like this, right? Even when you're on the ground, you can just grab the person's face and push your thumbs into his eyes. Uh, a fantastic technique to do. Even a punch on the throat uh, will cause for the person not to be able to breathe. But here's the thing. When you do any self-defense technique, have commitment. Have courage, have commitment. See it through. Don't don't even when you before you've started, give up and say, oh, he's too big. You know, I'm so small. Like you said, you saw the girls in my class train. And when the big guy mock attacked them, how good they were. But that's because you have to hit the target area on the attacker's body where it is going to hurt him. If you hit into the man's stomach, for instance, listen, let me tell you, very few women can knock a guy out hitting him into his stomach. It's, I haven't even seen it with karate, really. And besides that, 95% of the men in general have got big boopies. So now if you punch into that big boopie with your fist, can you imagine what happens? You're the boopie swallows the fist. And all that happens is your fist will just pop out. Nothing will happen to the attacker. And the other, other percentage, men have got nice, strong upper bodies. But a good technique is to strike between the legs. It doesn't matter how many times you go to the gym. You cannot strengthen that part of your body. 
You can't put weights there and say, mm, I'm doing strong weights today. I've got a strong groin. No. If you as a woman take all your power and your speed and focus and you strike between the legs, whether it is with your fist, with an open hand, whether you grab between the legs, hold tight, twist and pull, doesn't matter. It has an effect on the attacker. Now, what you need in the self-defense are just a couple of seconds to be able to run away or run to your room and lock the door. So that one blow, that kick, or that jab that you do with your knee between the guy's legs will be enough if it was on the target and all your power for him to let go of your throat and for you to be able to run away because that's what you want. You don't want a big fight that's ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. If anything goes wrong with any of the techniques you've done, Keep going. It's not over yet. Keep going as hard as you can and maybe try a, a different body part to strike. So that's in the blitz attack. It's so important that you know these various techniques and target areas to strike on the attacker's body because he's already in action. He's already grabbed your throat. He's already maybe grabbed you from behind, whether it's your neck or your body. He's in action. You can't talk to him now and um, try and, and, and get out of your situation and run away because he is in motion. He's in action. He is hurting you. And you have to have the courage. We always say to the woman, you know, when you, when you fall down three times, Get up five times. Now, that is the state of your mind. Try and have that state of mind where you say to yourself, look, you are getting hurt, but don't, don't focus on your own pain. Focus on how you're going to get out of that situation. Remember, you're only dealing with a, a human being, right? Even if he is bigger than you um, and that you're just dealing with a human being. Try and just have the commitment to see it through. If you fall down on the ground, for instance, grab the sand, throw it into his eyes. So the, the blitz attack is difficult. It's hard. Like in your particular attack, it was very hard. Um, and it is very difficult for women when they have to endure those blows. But you know what, Lois? I want to tell you this. I interviewed a woman who was blitz attacked. Now, the, this, this is a very interesting interview. She was blitz. She was 74 years old when she was attacked, this lady. And in the area where she lived was the hottest ever that ever it, that it's been. So during the night, she took off her, uh, her nightie. And she only had her panties on, sleeping. And she took the sheet of the, the cover of the bed, the sheet, and she just pulled it over. And she was lying on her back. And she said to me, she just, she just like two o'clock in the morning, she just heard a funny noise like that. And she opened her eyes and she just saw this man flying through the air and landed on top of her on the bed and immediately started strangling her with both his hands. And fortunately, she had a conversation with me before that attack happened. It was very strange. And I, I said to her, listen, five techniques. Just try and remember five techniques. Punch to his nose, break the nose. Punch to the throat, he can't breathe. Hit the ears, you burst the eardrums. Hit between the legs, his legs will go lame. Poke the eyes. Those are, those are techniques I think that one can remember, especially if you've done them a couple of times. She remembered, can you believe it? As he was busy strangling her, <clears throat> she said to me, she grabbed his arms, and in the process, her, arm, her hand slipped down his arms. She realized this guy had oiled his whole body. 
and he had squeezed his body, his oiled body, through the burglar box. So as her hand slipped down, she pulled her fist back and she hit him. She punched him. But she said to me, she was so sweet. She said to me, Smithy, I'm so sorry. I missed his nose. But I got him hot shot under the, under the chin. Fantastic. Of course, she broke her finger. She didn't know it at the time. But she punched so hard, she hit this guy completely off her. He landed on the bed. She then took her leg and she kicked him off the bed. She then did an important thing. She got out of the bed and she got onto her feet because now you can move around. He then jumped up and grabbed both her arms at her wrists. And as he was holding her arms at the wrists, she then grabbed his wrists so they were holding onto each other. He said to me, you know, while we were holding on to each other, this guy tried to throw me to the ground. He then pulled me to the side to throw me down. And she said to me, I said to myself, Smithy, no. And she pulled him back. And he pulled her again. And she pulled him back. And every time when he tried to throw to ground, to the ground, she pulled him back. And she said, no. And she shouted loud, no. And she said it was, she said to me, it was very funny because there they standing, pulling each other from side to side. And she said, Smithy, I looked down. And while we were busy pulling each other from side to side, she said, you know, I saw my boobs swinging from side to side. And she said, that made me furious. My boobs swinging from side to side. Well, that was a very, very funny interview. She said she then all of a sudden just took this guy and she threw him. He just landed there up against the wall. He jumped up. He grabbed a portable TV. He threw it through the window, jumped through uh, the window, and he escaped. So now I say, if we look, if we summarize that particular attack, it's a blitz attack, first of all. Secondly, the surface she was on wasn't a good surface for self-defense. She was lying on a mattress. But what she had was the state of the mind. And that is so important in any, any attack situation. And the state of your mind, number one. And then those other keep safe tips that I gave that will help you to enhance your awareness. Number two. Ah. And number three, women are capable. Just go, just do your best because you are not to blame for being attacked. And you must do the best for yourself in your situation. You decide. Wow, Lois, Smithy. Are you still there, my sweetheart? <laughs> Can you hear me? I hear you, Lois. My camera just went on the blink. Smitty, that was absolutely incredible. I just love hearing your stories. Um, we, we didn't mention at the beginning that you've done so much research and you even wrote a book about these different styles. How many styles did you identify? Well, look, the, 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 the two basic styles I've now explained, they are the most important. Confident style, and the blitz style, those are the two basic styles of attack. Concentrate on those. But the other, the other styles that you are referring to are patterns. Patterns of rape, date rape, fantasy rape, convenience rape, when somebody goes into your house to steal your goods, but then he sees, oh, there you are lying in your bedroom sleeping, and then he rapes you, like he's taking you as part of the goods. You understand? So there are different... Um, Patterns of rape, power rape, anger rape, gang rape, um, and then, of course, we have sadistic rape. But the two attack patterns that's basically used will be either the con confidence pattern, where the communication takes first, and then the attack happens, or the blitz attack, where it just happens. You don't even see it coming. You just feel the impact. Sure, thank you. Smitty, how can people get hold of you? How can they reach you? 
Um, you know what? I am. Uh, the, the, when I've done radio interviews in the past, the people say to me, "Don't give your cell number because the whole world will phone you." But I am going to give my cell number. Oh eight two four one five three nine six zero, and my email smith s m i t at self defense one word s e l f d e f e n c e dot c o dot z a. Um, my colleague is margaret m i r g a r e t at self defense dot c o dot z a. And then we, we, we also run an NPO called Stay Safe at home, at work, at play. Um, and we go all over the country with the Stay Safe uh, program as well. So that they can go on to staysafe.org.za, the website. Thank you, Smitty, for a very informative discussion. I hope that all the women out there are going to take some of that to heart and we live in a safer happier world thank you so very very much you are very welcome lois and i hope to talk, talk to you again huh? thank you everybody and tune in again next monday same time for further discussions on walking without skin